Hi guys, I'm Ivory, and today I'm going to be doing a two-day wear test on the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Foundation. I'm going to show you guys how it applies initially, as well as check in throughout the day to show you how it wears. For anyone that's new here, I have oily and acne-prone skin, so my wear tests are catered towards people with similar skin types, and if you find that this review is helpful, I will link up here a playlist of all the other foundations that I've reviewed. But before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every single week, and also be sure to follow me on my social media. Everything is underscore Ivory Cherry. Okay, so first, I want to break down each of the days because I don't do the same thing on day one and day two but if you're already kind of familiar with how my wear tests go somewhere on the screen I'm gonna put a timestamp so you could skip just straight to the review so on the first day half of my face I use primer the other half of my face the foundation just went directly on top of my skin so we'll see at the end of the day if primer made any difference and then also half my face I used a brush and then the other half of my face I use a sponge to show you how the foundation applies with two very common applicators and then depending on what works today I will take that information and apply it to the next day and also on the second day I'm applying powder underneath my foundation. That's a trick that I've learned to help prolong oils from coming through. And day two is also when I show what this foundation looks like under natural lighting. Things look very different with soft boxes and ring lights. So I wanted to show you what it looks like in natural light so you can get a better idea of how it's going to actually look. To save you a little bit of time, I will put timestamps of each of the days in my description box below. So feel free to skip around and the end. So let's actually talk about the foundation now. This is what the component looks like. It has frosted glass. It has a pump. Before I went in with foundation, I did go in with primer. I used the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Lock Primer. This one is one of my favorites to use. And then on this side of my face, I use a round kabuki brush. This one is from BS Small. It comes in a kit. I'll link it in my description box below. They are really great quality and they're very affordable. They're on Amazon. And then on the other side, I use a Juno & Co microfiber sponge. The foundation is supposed to be medium to full coverage that delivers a blurring effect, which reduces the appearance of fine lines and imperfections. It's vegan, cruelty-free, talc-free, paraben-free, oil-free, fragrance-free. The shade I'm using is 120 light medium. The bottle contains one fluid ounce and retails for $36. I just realized that the bottom says shake well and I didn't do that, so... Oh well. I'll try and remember that for tomorrow, but no guarantees. So initially, I planned on putting one pump on my plate and using one pump per side. And then on the brush side, I used about like 70% of the foundation. And I thought the coverage was pretty good on a first layer. So I ended up using the remaining 30% on the sponge side. It wasn't quite enough. So I ended up adding another half pump, but I also used some of that half pump for the second layer to touch up on my cheeks because these areas always need a little bit more coverage for me. From what I can see, both applicators worked really well, but I feel like the sponge side use less product to get to the same coverage as the brush side so both will work but I think with the microfiber sponge you'll get the most bang for your buck especially since this is really expensive on the first layer this was a medium medium full coverage it was somewhere in between that range and then on the second layer I really only focused it on the cheeks but I didn't want to add too much coverage just because my makeup is really light today I am volunteering at an animal shelter so I didn't want to go full glam and have like a full coverage foundation and then really minimal makeup it just it seems off to me, so I definitely could have added more, and this would 100% be full, but this is right now medium full, I would say. The finish of it is more on the matte side. It's not completely matte. I would say it's a natural matte finish, and as far as the claims, like the blurring and stuff, I do notice that it's not settling in any of my lines, actually. Usually, even like really good foundations, there'll be like a little bit of a crease pretty much right away. Even right here, that forehead wrinkle, I can maybe see it a little bit, but it's a lot better than most foundations, actually. So far, I think we're off to a good start. I had to use very little product to get a really good coverage. It feels really lightweight. It's not settling in my fine lines. I don't want to get my hopes up, but I have a good feeling about this foundation, but we'll see soon enough. So that is it for the first impression. So I will check in around the halfway point, probably a little past that because that's when I get home from volunteering. I will see you in a bit. All right, we are at the six hour mark. I am a little bit shinier, but I wouldn't say I'm greasy at all. On the chin area, it's breaking up ever so slightly and it's really not a big deal but the only reason i'm really commenting on it is because everywhere else looks really good there's no separation no settling my nose is looking good it hasn't even settled in my smile line right here and up here as well it's about the same there's maybe a little bit of wear and tear in the t-zone again i'm not mad about it but because everything else looks so good i'm picking apart even really small things as far as having no primer versus primer at this point i can't see the difference they look the same but overall i'd say this looks really good i'm really happy with the way that everything is wearing right now so that is it for now so i will check in at the end of the day and we'll go from there why are you down here <laughs> Millie, you can't stay down here i'm busy i'm working mm -hmm. bye bye 
All right, it is the end of the day. I've actually been wearing this for closer to 11 hours now. I'm watching a Netflix show called You. I started it yesterday and I just finished the entire first season. It's kind of dark and also the storyline is kind of realistic to me. When movies or TV shows have a realistic, scary scenario, it freaks me out. Like the Saw movies, they're so outlandish that I don't take them seriously. But for whatever reason, The Purge, it's like a little bit more realistic to me given how crazy people are. Like someone out there thinks the purge is good for this nation and that's how this tv show is i still recommend it it just it might it might rattle you a little bit um what are we talking about so this is how it looks after about 11 hours i think it looks really good i usually get a crack right here in the smile line even after 11 hours it's not there but there's one on my forehead but that's pretty much the only place i see a little bit of an issue with on my nose it's a little bit shiny but the coverage is still great it's not like splotchy it's not separating it's perfectly intact on my chin area as well as my t-zone those are the two areas where i see the most settling and the most cracking by no means is it perfect but it still looks pretty damn good and even though I'm a little bit shiny, I don't feel like I need to blot. Like I would be okay wearing this as is without touching it up, but I'm gonna go ahead and blot anyways, just to see what the foundation would look like if I did wanna blot. All right, this side is nice and matte again. I can see that as a whole, the blotting sheet has taken away a little bit of the coverage from my face. It's mostly right here on my chin area and a little bit in my T-zone and maybe a little bit on my nose, but it's actually still looking pretty good. I gotta say, so far, I'm really liking this foundation. As far as the side with or without primer, I don't think there was a difference, and if there was a difference, it wasn't enough for me to comment on or to notice. So whether or not you have it, at least in my situation, it didn't really make a difference. And 11 hours of wear is actually really great, especially considering I wasn't overly shiny. Even when I blotted, it still looked really good. And even though it settles a little bit into my fine lines, it's not doing it as much as other foundations. It's probably one of the better ones that I've used. And also to reiterate again, whether you use a brush or a sponge, you'll still get really good coverage, but I do feel like you use less product if you use a sponge, at least a microfiber sponge. I can't speak for any other type of sponges, so knowing that, I will apply that to tomorrow's wear test, but that concludes day one, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, it is day two of the wear test, so today I actually didn't add any primer. I didn't really see a difference on the first day, so I don't really think it's necessary, but I did add powder underneath with a puff. This one is from Tati Beauty. I use the Derma Blend Loose Setting Powder. I almost always use this powder when I do put powder underneath my foundation. It's probably one of the smoothest and finest powders that I have in my collection and with the puff I only focus this on a couple certain areas. So my nose, my t-zone, my smile line, and my chin. Everywhere else I left alone and then I applied the foundation using only a microfiber sponge. I thought it looked fine with the brush but I am used to using a sponge and like I said I felt like it used less product. I did two layers and in total I used one and a half pumps and for that little product I got great coverage. One thing I did want to say is usually I wait about four minutes in between each layer so that the first one is completely dried down so that when I go in with the second coat I'm not moving around the first layer but for this foundation I only had to wait a minute or two because it dried down really fast and after only a couple minutes I was able to touch it and even though it wasn't set with powder it felt like it was set so that's one thing I really like about this foundation after that I did the rest of my makeup as normal and it looks just as good as it did on day one there's not much to add at this point because I haven't even been wearing it for an hour now so I'm just gonna stop here the next time that you see me I will be in natural lighting so I'll see you in a couple hours. All right, we are four hours in. I think I'm only gonna wear this for eight hours today since yesterday I did 10, so it's not really necessary to wear this the whole day. I am still really matte. I think it's a little too early to tell, but last time at around, I think the six hour mark, the foundation was starting to wear off on my chin. Right now, I would say it looks pretty perfect and it's not settling in the smile line, maybe a little bit right here in the forehead wrinkle, but it's really not that bad. By the way, I have a feeling you guys are gonna see me wearing this t-shirt a lot. It has Snoopy on it. Generally in my own house, I wear the same thing for like four days straight and my rule is if no one sees you wear it Then it's okay to repeat the clothes, but most people that do that probably don't have a channel So I have a feeling for a lot of future videos. You're gonna see me in this exact same shirt Often <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing, but I feel like if I just own up to it Then it's less embarrassing and I figure since a lot of people are working from home that it's less uncommon for people to be doing that <laughs> but at this point there's I don't see anything wrong with this foundation. Nothing's wearing off. I'm not oily. I think it looks pretty much the same as it did four hours ago, which is great. So that is it for this check-in. I will see you in a couple more hours for my final thoughts. All right, we are finally at the end of this wear test. I think this foundation looks 
amazing. I don't feel like I need to blot at all. Um, so I'm going to skip that today since I did it yesterday. One thing I do want to point out. Okay, so you can see right here in this area, I have a dry flaky. I think I had a zit here and I was just scabbing. I don't remember it looking like that initially when I applied this foundation. But other than this area, I don't think that this matters. The foundation is not breaking up the same way that it did yesterday. And I saw it slightly breaking up at the six hour mark. So this is eight hour mark right now. So that tells me that the powder did do something. So if you had this foundation and you we're having issues with it separating, breaking up. It might be helpful for you to add a very thin layer of powder underneath and hopefully that will fix that problem. But from what I can see, adding powder underneath in all the areas where it wasn't super perfect made it stay together way better today. Yeah, on my nose, there's no splotchiness, no separating. It's not collecting anywhere. Same thing on my T-zone. I mean, it's not perfect. This probably is the most problematic area for me just because I have quite large pores here. And then everywhere else looks absolutely amazing. So before I give my recommendation, even though I think we already know what it is, let's go over the good and the bad about this foundation. So the good is that a little bit goes a long way. The coverage, as you saw, was really great. I only used one and a half pumps each of the days and I was able to get medium full coverage. I definitely could have added more, but I was happy with the coverage as is. So this will last you a long time. It's great for oily skin and lasted up to 10 hours, which for me is really great wear time. Even though it did settle a little bit, it doesn't settle nearly as much into my fine lines as other foundations. I point this out in almost all of my wear tests that my forehead wrinkle and my smile line always gets a little bit of a crease. I don't have that in this case. There's only a little faint line right here in my forehead wrinkle, but it's not bad at all. On the description of this foundation, they said that there was some blurring effect. And since it didn't really settle into my fine lines, I can agree to that to some extent. So if you have more mature skin, this might be a good option for you. I didn't need a primer with this foundation. And even though it did stay together better with powder underneath, on the first day where I didn't have powder underneath, it still looked good. It's just that some areas Areas have more wear and tear than others so having powder underneath those certain areas it helped level the playing field I guess I hope that makes sense it does in my head the things I didn't like about this foundation the blotting sheets will make you lose a little bit of coverage it will shear it out a little bit it wasn't bad but that's the only con I can really think of is that it's not gonna look absolutely perfect after you blot. 10 hours of wear is still a lot for me, but if I had to wear this foundation longer than that, I would be okay with blotting and then continuing throughout my day without having to take off this foundation. There are some foundations where even though 10 hours of wear is really good, I know if I touch it up or I blot it, it's gonna ruin the foundation, so I'm better off looking super oily and leaving it as is than mattifying myself and blotting because I'll just have like splotches of missing foundation everywhere. You're not gonna get that with this. Just know that you'll lose a little bit of coverage. And I guess I guess the last con is the price. This is an expensive foundation. I think it was $36. That's one of the higher ones that I've seen in a while. It's hard for me to justify a foundation being that expensive just because I know that there are so many good drugstore ones. But to me, I think that the price is kind of justified. I say that loosely because for me, usually I use about three pumps for my entire face. And for this one, I only had to use one and a half, which means that this is going to last you longer. And my thing is, if it's that expensive, it better work really well. And I think this went above and beyond my expectations. So with that being said, I do 100% recommend this foundation. If it's within your price range, I think that this is worth looking into. And if this is out of your price range, maybe go to Sephora, get a little sample, and only on special occasions, use the sample of this. Because for some people, this is not an everyday work situation. For a lot of people, this is overkill and they want something more natural on a workday basis. So there's that option too. But that is it for this review. I hope that it was helpful for you. And if it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment down below what foundation I should try next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.